puts them at a 75% loan to value, which is a low loan to value as far as risk ratio to the bank. So we were able to use a program that we call Jumbo Flex. And we were able to, and I want to brag on this, and I really want to brag on my team. It wasn't me. It came through the office and our, and our team handled it. But 1.75 was the value. So every lender was capping the cash out at a half a million. Well, this, this individual needs three quarters of a million dollars to capitalize on this opportunity. So we used the guideline exceptions in the flex program. And with a 75% loan to value, that put their loan amount at 1.3. We paid off the, the um, it was actually 1.3. I'm going to do this from memory. One one million three hundred and twelve thousand five hundred. I have it in front of me, and we paid off five hundred and sixty two five. So they walked with um, seven hundred and fifty thousand cash out, which nobody could pull more than a half a million out in cash. So I was super excited about that. But that's a situation when the property values start to get up there, you may be limited to how much cash you can pull out. And we were able to accomplish that with an adjustable rate mortgage that kept their interest rate in the fours, which was pretty phenomenal in, in this day and age. So super excited about that. I hope that answers your question, uh, Melvin. And I'm super excited that you're going to call the office because I'm looking forward to walking you through that. But yeah, use your property value times 80% unless you're pulling more than um, a half a million dollars in cash out, then you're going to want to use that 0.75 or that 75%. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, I'm going to throw it over to Dom and see if we have another one. We do. Emma wants to know, you just talked about a lease option program. Where can I get a list of these homes? Hey, Emma, thanks for that. That was fast. Um, Yeah, so that lease option program, they do have some currently owned properties that are available. And as I mentioned, um, with that program, if you choose not to exercise the option, you can just walk away after the lease period. And some people do that. They get a job transfer. They have... Um, another child, they need a bigger house for whatever reason during that 36 month period, that home ne- no longer met their needs. They were able to move on and, and take that savings escrow with them. So there are a few homes, but where I'm going with this is the really cool part about it is you pick the house. Just go on Zillow, um, go on realtor.com, give us a shout. We'll get you in touch with some agents who are really um, good with this program and they have the resources but you pick the house and typically they want it to be a single family home. They're not looking for a condo. Um, but yeah, you pick the house and if the house meets the uh, guidelines and your income and credit score meet the guidelines, boom, you're done. So I encourage you to give us a shout five, six, one, two, nine, one, eight, five, six, nine, and let me get you the information you need on that program. It's a fairly new program. It's fairly new to us. And it gives us that 36-month window to get you mortgage ready. So, Emma, to answer your question, there's not a list, but I can give you, um, not a big list. I can give you the list of the current properties. But um, the really cool part is you pick the property, and then uh, they buy the property and lease it back to you. So hopefully that helps. But as I mentioned, I'm happy to give you all the info you need at 561-291-8569 is the best way to reach me. Or visit the website, www dot mr dot mortgage never ever a dot com just type in mr dot mortgage we'll be back right after this hey it's mark i tell here host of the mr mortgage show and you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily it's not quite an appraisal but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates and we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge just visit freevaluereport.org that's freevaluereport.org give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report that's freevaluereport.org Here's another five-star review. We kept our business above water with credit cards during the pandemic. I'm glad we did. Business is better than ever. But I didn't want to be a slave to those credit card payments. I called Mark about the REC loan he advertises. Long story short, we did a REC refinance and paid off everything, even the car. Now we only have the mortgage payment. We're saving a bunch every month. Yes, we are happy to recommend Mark and the Mr. Mortgage team. 
It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell him you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, you heard the man, 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569, 561-291-8569. I finally have that memorized. That is the Anytime Hotline. And uh, yeah, call or text your questions there. And uh, keep in mind that that, shoots, uh, that pushes to our office during the week. So you're always able to get us via that number or visit the website, www.mr.mortgage. There's never a .com. Just type in mr.mortgage. Or all of these cool, fun facts and statistics and videos that you hear me reference during the show, you can find those on the Facebook page, which is The Mr. Mortgage Show at Facebook. Just go up in the upper left-hand corner and uh, search The Mr. Mortgage Show and you'll find us. So, yeah, let's keep it rolling. I really want to say thanks for everybody shooting their questions to us. There have been some good ones this week, and hopefully we've got some more good ones teed up. Kyle did send us this one. He's asking, I'm self-employed, don't show much income, and my bank said no. Are there any loan programs that will work for me? Hey, Kyle, I love it when the bank says no. I don't love it for you because obviously that's the easiest place to start, right? And most people start there because the bank has all your information and they're not going to ask you for bank statements, right? You already have them there. But um, to answer your question, yes, there's there are many, many, many programs available for self-employed borrowers. And... It's interesting. I had this conversation this week at um, at my office and right down the hall from my office is probably one of the best um, CPAs that I've met. And Pete and I were talking and it's funny because sometimes we're doing business with our doors open and I'll hear him in there talking to his clients. And I've never, ever once heard one of his clients ask him, hey, Pete, do my taxes in a fashion that I'll make sure I qualify for a large mortgage amount. They always say, hey, Pete, do my taxes in a way that I'm going to pay the fewest uh, or pay the smallest amount of uh, taxes. So you have a good CPA like uh, like I'm talking about. Well, in that instance, you're not going to show all the income necessary most often to um, qualify for the mortgage. So until you go in your CPA's office and start asking them to uh, make you mortgage ready, you're most likely going to use a bank statement program. Um, And we have a variety of them. We can use your business statements, your personal statements, sometimes a combination of both. There are programs that will look at as little as the most recent 12 months of statements or the uh, most recent 24 months of statements. And basically what is happening is we're taking an average of your deposits. We're looking for consistency. We're taking an average of your deposits to determine a uh, monthly income. And then depending on the field that you work in, there's a multiplier that is um, applied to the particular amount. So if you're a contractor and you're buying a lot of materials, then obviously, you know, a big chunk of what you're depositing in the bank each month is going out for materials or additional labor. But if you're, let's say you're a consultant and you work from home and your work product is your, the intellectual production of reports or, or, or data uh, analytics, you are going to have a a much smaller expense ratio applied to that. So there are even some um, 
uh, situations where we're using 100% of personal bank statement deposits for employment. So to answer your question, I wouldn't get hung up on the no. Give us a shout. There's a ton of programs available, and maybe we can work with one of the bank statement programs to get you qualified. But uh, yeah, 561-291-8569 is the Anytime Hotline, and you can catch us there during the week too. So hopefully that helps. There's most likely an opportunity there for you. Just get with a broker who has the bank statement programs available and we're happy to help with that if you give us a chance. So thank you. Uh, and I'm going to throw that right back to Dom for another question. Stephanie just called us with this one. We're looking at a house near downtown. There is a cottage on the property that is rented. Can we use the rental income to help us qualify for the mortgage? Hey, Stephanie, that's a really good question. And, um, I don't know exactly what downtown you're referring to, but in a lot of the older neighborhoods, there are um, existing out parcels or, you know, a a detached garage or a mother-in-law suite or something that over the years became a cottage. Um, From my hometown in the West Palm Beach Lake Worth area, it was very common for there to be an out outbuilding on the property that was, you know, in the closer you get to Palm Beach, they were servant quarters or not. Yeah, I guess servant quarters or uh, the maid quarters. Um, but as you got out with the rest, <laughs> at the rest of us, we called it a mother-in-law suite. But um, yeah, so to answer your question, you can use that income. There are some um, prerequisites that have to be met and some protocols, but um, typically that rental income from the cottage, and you may hear that cottage referred to as an uh, accessory dwelling unit or the more popular kind of catchphrase is ADU. Um, Everybody likes to use the initials. So an ADU is an accessory dwelling unit, is a cottage, is a detached rental um, unit on your subject property. And it's treated differently than like a duplex, but yes, you can use that uh, income in most cases. And depending on your credit score, your down payment amount, and your loan product will determine how much of that rental income you can use to qualify. But a very, very safe rule of thumb is going to be um, 0.75. So take your income and 75% of the annual rent, and that will um, add those two numbers together. And that should be the income that you're using when you're um, going through your debt to income calculations. So I hope that helps. I know there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of that ADU happening out in the California area, they cha- recently changed the zoning uh, for single family lot minimum requirements for people to add ADUs. And if you're ever online and you're bored, Google Boxed, I think it's called Boxed or Box Box Homes. And there's a company that actually created a very cool concept where they deliver an ADU or a cottage and uh, a mother in law suite as a flat. It comes off the tractor trailer. And it gets uh, dropped on the property and then the walls stand up and the roof stands up and it's all inclusive and it's it's ready to go. And the cool thing about that was that very shortly after that company launched, they were like, you know, 12, 24 months back ordered already. And I think it had something to do with that California zoning law that was changed. So um, anyway, not that not that everything that happens in California is cool because they do have a tendency to overregulate in some some areas, but I did think that was interesting as there's such a demand for housing in some areas that they did loosen up the zoning requirements to allow for those accessory dwelling units to be added on existing properties, or they're taking detached garages and adding a second story to it and turning that into an above garage apartment. So super cool. There's an opportunity there. And yes, you can use that rental income. Um, unlike the DSCR loan where you can use a hundred percent of the rental income because that's just treated purely as an investment property. And most of the time requires a larger down payment. Um, you're probably going to be restricted to just 75% of the rental income, but I'd be happy to talk you through that because there are some moving parts to that. Again, I mentioned credit score down payment, um, that'll kind of dictate what program you'll qualify for. And then within that program, those guidelines will determine how much of that rental income you'll be able to use. So um, great that you're looking at that as an opportunity, because I think anytime you can get multiple doors, you hear me all the time talking about um, rental income, buying a, buying a fourplex and, um, you know, using one as your primary residence as a great starter option. And then you've got four doors uh, appreciating at the same time. So 
Um, hope, hopefully that answers your question. I went a little long on it, but yeah, Stephanie, you should be able to use that income. And like I said, a lot of loan programs out there right now, rental income is a, is a great opportunity um, for the DSCR program for investors. For primary residents, you can buy up to four units, or in this case, um, a detached cottage or a detached ADU being used as income uh, to qualify you. So, yep, certainly an opportunity out there. And you hear me talk about it all the time. And we'll dig into that a little bit more as the show goes on. But I want to talk about finding the opportunity in this market because, as I mentioned in the opening segment, you know, the news and the clickbait on the internet. It's just everything right now is doom and gloom and it's just not. It's not. 